What's up, YouTube? Tenton here, and today we will be discussing the next time on Death Battle between Genos from One Punch Man and War Machine from Marvel Comics. But before we get on to that, let us discuss the last time on Death Battle. The last episode was a blast to watch, honestly. It was a treat, it was fun, I'm so happy that the Power Rangers finally have their win. The losing streak's over, I mean the win rate's only 25%, so it's not that great, but hey, it's better than frickin' zero. And, all things considered, they started off as the worst franchise in Death Battle history, with three straight losses. They seriously needed this win. And Power Rangers is finally out of the dumps. It doesn't have the best win record, to be honest, but hey, it's better than 0%. And now their loser crown, promptly, and deservingly, belongs to Soul Calibur. Because, oh my gosh, that franchise is now the only franchise to have just nothing but losses, with two losses. Poor Soul Calibur, man. They need some redemption, too. Who knows what the season has to come, but for now, the episode was great. I was correct in my prediction. That's two out of three this season so far. Batting a strong record. Let's hope it continues going forward. Episode was great. Happy Jason won. I'm kind of sad we didn't get to see any of the mechs, but I mean, if the mechs didn't really matter, all things considered, Jason wins either way. But it was a treat. It was fun. Loved the episode. But now, let's go on to the next time. This episode at first had me a bit perplexed. I didn't really see what these two had in common, honestly, but now that I've looked into it a bit more, it does make a lot of sense. Sidekicks to the hero that are gifted mechanical suits, or in Genos' case, a mechanical body, to help fight the old good fight. It works thematically, and I think the two of them compare to each other pretty well. However, in certain cases, I feel War Machine has just blatantly better advantages comparatively to Genos, However, I feel Genos also has that advantage of being a one-punch character and knowing how freaking ridiculous they are. I mean, just look at freaking Tatsumaki, her episode, she's absurd. And Genos, by the grace of being in the same universe as her, somewhat scales to that level of power. I mean, obviously Tatsumaki is a far superior hero comparatively to Genos in terms of raw power, based off what I know, but Genos should still be in somewhat of that ballpark. Going into their arsenals, I know War Machine can absorb energy and electrical attacks that are thrown at him. He has an electromagnetic pulse, he has a chain gun, chainsaws, flamethrowers, gatling guns, missiles, repulsor blasts, plasma cannons, pulse cannons, and the piece de resistance, the Unibeam. An attack capable of decimating mountains and even destroying islands. The Unibeam is Iron Man's bread and butter and it most certainly is War Machine's too. And one of the few good things about War Machine as a character in terms of scaling is that he completely scales to Iron Man. And anything Iron Man can do in the suits that are comparable to Rhodey's, it's realistic that Rhodey can do those suits as well, so it's easy to scale him. And Iron Man in some of his suits has lifted 85 to 100 tons, flown at Mach 20, like took in nuclear attacks, survived like being chucked through lava, like a bunch of crap. War Machine scales to all of that, and the Marvel Universe is ultimately a more powerful universe, so it's likely War Machine's gone up against more dangerous foes. However, Genos is by no means a pushover. Genos has specific sensors to track people's movements. He has incinerator cannons that can apparently destroy buildings. He has this core that powers himself, and then he can channel into his arms to increase their striking power. He has jet boosters that increase his speed and allow him to fly, though it is very limited and War Machine's flight is definitely superior overall. Genos has a self-destruct where he can just blow himself up if he's losing, though I believe it's unknown how much this does, as I believe the only time he's tried it, Saitama stopped him. Though, I mean, who knows, I'm not an expert on these characters by any means. He has multiple different types of attacks, with the machine gun blow, the, the boost attack, rocket punch, lightning eye, which is basically the solar flare. He can remove his arms, he can discharge electricity, and he has arms mode, which is basically his Super Saiyan, all things considered. Both of their arsenals are definitely impressive, and they definitely have a lot going for them. However, when it comes to this fight, I'm definitely leaning more towards War Machine, ultimately. Simply because he's had more history as a character, he has a lot more material to draw from, he's in a more powerful universe. And War Machine is a trained military soldier with years of experience. While Genos is a 19 year old who's been a cyborg for 4 years, and while he's definitely done some impressive things, his level of experience is nowhere near Rhodey, and War Machine as a character has been through far worse comparatively speaking. In terms of their stats, they're relatively even with speed, it can go either way based off what I know, 
I know Genos has fought Sonic, not the hedgehog kind, but he still fought a character that is faster than sound. Though it's unknown how specifically fast Sonic is, I've heard he can go like 10 times the speed of sound, or just the speed of sound, it's all over the place. As for War Machine, he scales to Iron Man, so like, at best Mach 20, at worst the speed of sound, give or take, just depends on what Death Battle chooses to scale. In terms of raw physical strength, he can match Saitama to a point. Now, obviously, if Saitama's trying, he'll get obliterated. But Genos can, at worst, like, destroy skyscrapers, and he can damage mountains, which is impressive, all things considered. In terms of durability, War Machine definitely has a better track record, as Genos tends to get obliterated in a lot of his fights. And with that being said, I suppose I should transition into Genos' biggest problem as a character. He's Yamcha. Genos is the whipping boy. Genos is that character used to show how impressive the current threat is and how dangerous the current threat is. He's Yamcha. He's the whipping boy. Now that being said, is he as weak or as useless as Yamcha is in the main canon? Hell no. Genos is impressive, Genos is powerful, and he's not someone to be underestimated. However, he does fill the same role as Yamcha in terms of a narrative. He is there to be a sidekick kind of character, and he is there to show how powerful the villains currently are, or the current threat is. He's not the main guy, and Genos does kind of suffer for that. It doesn't just end there, though. Genos does have other weaknesses. His core is a vital part of his power set, and if it is damaged, it will severely hurt his chances of winning. And his arms can be easily destroyed. I mean, how many times has that happened in the show? A lot. Though Genos does constantly upgrade his body and his capabilities throughout the show, so it's hard to truly, like, label how strong he is for me, considering I don't have the time to research the entire show. However, Genos most certainly isn't a pushover by any means. On to War Machine's weaknesses, War Machine's biggest flaw is that his suit has a limited supply of fuel and power. Meaning, if Genos can prolong the fight long enough, War Machine will eventually run out of gas. And War Machine is very susceptible to EMPs, though Genos doesn't have any of that, so it's unlikely he'd be able to exploit that weakness. All things considered, this fight is relatively close in some regards. Genos certainly isn't a pushover by any means, and he most certainly can damage War Machine's armor. However, I feel War Machine has enough advantages to give him the win. War Machine is physically superior to Genos as far as I know. He is likely faster, his suit is likely more durable, he has better training, he has more experience, he's probably faced more dangerous threats, and ultimately, War Machine just feels like a more powerful character in my opinion. All that being said, Genos is still a very powerful character, he still has a lot going for him, and he is still a one-punch man character. Those characters are ridiculous, and you'd be a fool to underestimate what he is capable of. But with that being said, while I feel the fight is close to some extent, I do feel that War Machine takes it. And for my record's sake, I'm going with War Machine. But what do you guys think? Who are you rooting for? Are you going to go with Genos, or are you going to back War Machine just like me? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. This has been Ten Ton. Peace.